Hey everyone, I'm Carissa with Color Pencil Magazine and today I'm going to show you how I drew this butterfly from the new Grisaille drawing kit. This kit includes two Grisailles, your color guide with all the suggested colors, two reference photos, and two mats. So when you're finished, you can put your butterfly in the mat and it looks like a real butterfly inside, which is really cool. In today's video, I'm just going to be showing you how I drew the bottom of the butterfly, which is a little bit more challenging because of the variety of colors and patterns inside the wings. Um, so I'm just going to give you some tips along the way of what I did to blend these colors together to get the most accurate results. Let's get started. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going in with the shade Lime Peel and it's this really nice green color. And this is gonna be the color that I use for the green veins in the butterfly's wings. So I'm kind of studying the photo right now and um, trying to notice all the little bits of green that are in these butterfly's wings. And it's cool because the nickname for this butterfly is Green Veined Butterfly. And you kind of overlook it at first, but once you start drawing it, you notice um, how many green veins are in its wings, and I think it's really beautiful. After I'm done with green, I take this shade Eggshell, which is a light cream yellowy color, and I go around those veins and start to fill it in. You can see I'm kind of doing the mirror technique. So as soon as I do something to one side, I do it to the next side. This helps me uh, be cohesive with my piece and know exactly what I'm doing so that I don't forget the steps um, on the other side. If you prefer to work left to right, that is completely fine. Whatever works best for you. Throughout the piece you can see I'm adding white on top of the green just to kind of lighten it and also to burnish because as I've said before I am a burnishing type of artist. I love to go in um, heavy handed. If that is not the technique for you I think this piece would look absolutely beautiful um, without being burnished. I think that you, it doesn't need to be perfectly smoothed because you know butterfly wings they do have texture and they do look kind of fuzzy um, but I I am just a very heavy-handed artist and this is the way that I work. I'm going in with chocolate which is a really nice deep brown color and I'm adding the shadows to the face and the, the antennas. I also use uh, espresso for the antennas which is a really deep brownish gray color. Um, I really prefer this over black because I'm sort of learning as I draw that for a lot of pieces black is just a little bit too harsh and I think um, that since I am heavy handed um, if I use black it's just going to turn out too dark and too defined and we want it to look natural. So using a deep brown or a gray is a great alternative to black. So on each of these little lines in the wings, I start out with chocolate and then I go in with espresso and I put that in the center of each line um, because it is a little bit feathered out and I want it to be lighter on the outside of the lines and um, darker in the middle.
What's really cool about this kit is that it's kind of like a science lesson as well as an art lesson because you're kind of just studying this butterfly and you're learning about it as you go and all of the details that are in it and it's just really cool and there's also some information about the species of butterfly um, along with the color guide and so it just gives you that little bit of information that kind of um, helps, helps you kind of bring the piece to life. Right now I'm kind of just marking in all of the lines and then going over with uh, the shade Jasmine to get that yellow down and then I go in with Canary Yellow and for those brighter areas I put that on top. Um, you kind of get into a groove after doing it for a little while. Um, you get to notice that there's like a shadow under every like oval and the patterns just kind of become more clear to you and so I'm just trying to find those little details that make the wings so beautiful. I'm taking a chestnut brown and kind of uh, shading those little ovals. Um, and I think something that is important to remember with this piece is you don't want to lose the warmth. And I think it's really important to mix your browns, yellows, and oranges correctly to get that warmth and not muddy the, the colors. Uh, because the patterns, they look so much better when they're a little bit more defined and you don't want it to be too blended uh, because then it just looks too muddy and it's not going to be as pretty when you are done. Now I'm picking up where I left off on the other wing because now I've kind of got it down. Um, I'm just trying to recreate the same thing I did on the other wing. That really red orangey brown I'm using is called Burnt Ochre and I use that a lot for this piece. Um, I outline the wings with it and kind of blend out from there. If I see a shade in the piece that is a little darker I use chocolate and then I kind of go in a little deeper with espresso and then just kind of blend those two colors out and it creates um, a dark color that isn't too stark. Usually when I am finishing up a piece, I kind of uh, look at it and see what I can touch up on like for my last touches and what I ended up doing with this piece is making the colors even warmer and using more orange and more yellow to get that vibrancy because I did use brown a lot. Um, there's a lot of brown in the piece, but I didn't want to lose all the warmth um, in the wings. So I just kind of go back and add orange and yellows. So don't be afraid to make it look too warm. If you want to even enhance the vibrancy, you know, you, it'll only look more beautiful if you just enhance the things that you like about it. If you want the colors to be more exaggerated, um, that's going to look super pretty when you're done.
Now, I'm starting to do the areas that require a lot of layering. Um, I use the shade Chocolate to do the lines underneath and then I kind of blend upwards so that you kind of get the shadow underneath and then um, it gets lighter as it goes up. I just find that that was kind of the easiest way for me to do it. I just got into a pattern of using that shade Burnt Ochre and filling in those mid-tone spaces and then underneath using chocolate and then espresso afterwards um, to define those dark areas. And then I use the shade Jasmine and Canary Yellow for the middle. If it's a little bit lighter, then I use the shade Eggshell and I kind of blend those together to get the shades that I want. And then I'm just doing the exact same thing on the right side. I kind of highlight the middle of these brown spots with a little bit of orange and it just brings some life into it and it warms it up a little bit more and that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. Once you start layering a lot, you start to get those little pencil crumbs um, from all the buildup. What I do is I take a gum eraser and I just very lightly tap the top of the paper and it just picks up all those crumbs. Um, sometimes I try blowing it away or brushing it off with a paintbrush. Um, but I kind of found while doing this piece, I just grabbed what was next to me, which was a gum eraser, and just cleaned it up. And I also go in and I clean up the surrounding area around the butterfly so that I'm not smudging the crumbs of the pencil into the paper with my hand. I think that was super helpful while creating this piece.
I will say pay close attention to the veins. You don't want to draw over them. There was a couple times where I had to take the green and just draw a harsh line through it and then add white on top to get that light green shade that I wanted. Um, so just make sure that you don't lose those lines because I think that that really brings the piece together. I think that that little hint of color is really beautiful and really complimentary. I will take some breaks while working on the piece and then when I come back I start to notice things that I can improve on so I take that bright orange and I just add a little bit of that in some, into some of the browns and I find that that just really brings out the vibrancy and the warmth and that is the thing that I really am trying to emulate. This part was fun and also a little bit challenging because there's a lot of colors that you have to mix to get the exact shade that's in the picture. If you don't care about that so much, um, then I would just say do your best at guessing. Um, for the people that want to get it just right, I find that mixing espresso and chocolate together um, very lightly and then um, just keep layering those two and then add white on top and it gives you that grayish reddish brown shade and then for these little circles um, I fill it in with white first and then I go around with the bright yellow and then bright orange and then I add white on top again also I like to work in little sections so each of these circles has two veins on the side and one vein running through the circle so I just like to work in those little sections because it keeps me focused on what I'm doing it keeps me focused on getting that uh, exact color um, and I just repeat this process going down the wing.
some parts I didn't just use white on top I would use a little bit of jasmine yellow if the color was a little too cool um, because I wanted it to just have that little hint of yellow but also kind of get that faded look Again, if you want to see the exact colors I'm working with, you can refer to the color guide that comes with the kit. Uh, you can also download it from the website, take a look at it, and it'll give you some tips to uh, sort of guide you along the way while you're creating this piece. Um, it gives you some fun facts about this butterfly, which I think is really cool. Again, it kind of like a science lesson as well. And you get to learn a little bit more about this little specimen and hang them on your wall. And I just think that it's so so pretty and yeah i just i'm i'm loving how this is coming along I just keep repeating this process, mixing these colors together. Um, I did not use a blender for this piece. Um, I mainly used the shade Eggshell, that light cream color, and white. White does not come included in the kit, but it's not really necessary. The only time I used it was for the circles at the bottom of the wings, um, and that's about it. Um, and I'm sure you have your own white colored pencils. I always have a stash because I love to blend with white. Um, but I also love to blend with creams and light and similar colors. Uh, really helpful for burnishing if you are into that.
I'm just finishing up here. Um, I will say for the bottom, you can see that there's like that tiny dot. I just took espresso and did a like semi-circle at the bottom of the dot and then I used white to blend it upwards because it's got a little bit of white at the tip. Super simple. This only takes a second. It's that little detail that kind of brings it together. Um, you know, paying attention to the little tiny things really adds up. And that's something I've learned on my art journey as well, is don't forget those tiny details because every little thing that you do just helps bring your piece to life. Now that I have finished, I'm just looking everything over, comparing the photo with the drawing. This piece took me about two, two and a half hours to complete. Uh, here is the reference photo, the grisaille, and my finished piece. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun with it. It's pretty simple. Um, but it's also a little bit of a challenge uh, getting all those patterns and all the details in there but of course that's the part that I love the most is details and coloring so this was uh, a great exercise for me and I hope that you enjoy it too. Thank you so so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to head to grizzeye.com and get your kit today.